I've just made a video for GMBN about using your urban commute, be that to college, to school, to work, whatever it is, uh, to best effect essentially, so you can get some more time on your mountain bike, honing in some skills, getting that heart rate up for fitness reasons, and of course, just having some good fun. Now, whilst making that video, it made me realize I had to make a few changes to my bike to make it a bit more suitable for that, because I don't really have another bike at the moment. This is my main bike, so riding a six inch Travel 29er bike on urban terrain definitely isn't that much fun. So this is what I've done to convert my bike to make it suitable for a bit of urban thrashing. So really, to get my bike set up, I've made quite a few adjustments. Now let's start by looking at the tires. Up front, I run a Trail King. It's my normal go-to tire. I normally run this about between 26 and 28 PSI. At the moment, 50 PSI. That is what I run when I'm riding to work, when I'm doing my daily commute. And if I'm just doing any urban stuff, which involves like smashing down flights and stairs of that, it is granted, you don't have as much traction. It's not as comfortable. However, it does mean it is gonna help me preserve my rims a bit more and it does roll significantly faster. Now, out back, I always tend to run a faster rolling tire anyway. Now, the Mountain King tire is a great tire, it does roll fast, however, it doesn't have the apex casing that the Trail King does, so the casing's a lot lighter, which means smashing down flights of stairs is not gonna do it much good. So again, I'm running that about 50 pounds, but on the inside, I'm running one of these. Now I don't run this on the front, I'm only running this on the rear. So this is the Nukeproof Ard system, so this is a rim insert. There's various different ones available on the market. There's Cush Core, which really is a very specialist product because just to fit those and get them off if you need to get them off, bit of a nightmare. So if you're a serious downhill racer or maybe a serious enduro racer, perhaps Cush Core might be an option for you. But the Nukeproof Ard system really does work well for me and a great value as well. They come as a set in 27 half or in 29 inch and they come with valve stems that are suitable for use with these they don't absorb your tire sealant on the inside of the tire so you put your regular amount in well, to be fair i always put a bit more than regular anyway and it both helps the tire stay on the rim it helps protect the tire sidewalls against pinching which does happen when you're smashing down flights of stairs and stuff like that and of course it gives you a bit more support and it protects the rim it's a win-win situation on every level, and they're so light as well. Now, my Nukeproof Mega 290, of course, has 29-inch wheels, and it's got 150 millimeters of travel via that Fox X2 shock. Now, the Fox X2 is clearly a very, very good, very capable shock, but it's not exactly man's best friend when you're riding around town. Of course, this isn't a town bike, that's not what it's designed for, but you can still make it work to your advantage. Now I tend to like about a third of my available travel sag. I tend to prefer my tires firmer and my suspension on a slightly softer side, just to get a really good feel on the bike. And this does allow it because it's very controlled with the four way damping on there. So it's got high and low speed compression and high and low speed rebound. And it also in addition has a climb switch, which is separate, separate circuit on that low speed compression and effectively gives it a platform. So when you pedal, it doesn't sort of bob around too much. Now this is great, but I also don't want to damage that feature, it's a shin based system on the inside. And if you run it effectively locked out like that, the same with any shock, if you run them like that on a permanent basis, you're basically going to bend the shims on the inside and it's not going to work the way it's supposed to work. So what I like to do with my shock, and the same with my fork, which I'll get to in a minute for urban riding, is make a few changes. So firstly, I up the pressure in there. So again, normally I'm running about a third sag and I'm running less than a quarter sag in here for my day-to-day -day riding. It's only when it comes to weekends, I'll make my changes and always refer back to my base settings. This is why in our suspension tutorial videos, I always say once you find your good setting as you know, your base for all round riding, make a note of it. Know your pressures, know your clicks, whether that's from fully open or from fully closed. That way you can easily return to it any time. Now I've got low speed compression wound fully in on the shock. I want this to basically not move when I'm pedaling and sprinting through the traffic and that, but I still want the shock to do its own thing. So I'm not gonna be really using that climb switch unless I absolutely need to. Now, of course there are some brutal hills and it does help that because your body weight shift is so extreme towards the back of the bike. No matter what suspension platform you have, sometimes 
it just really helps stand the bike up a bit better. But then also, I like to increase the rebound on there. Now you might think that low speed compression does all the work when you're pedaling to avoid the bike wallowing around, but actually slowing down the rebound on the bike by doing the same adjustment with your low speed rebound damping. You can do this on a single dial, but it works even better if you can just do it on the low speed. If you crank that up, you'll find the bike barely moves. It will still move when you start hitting bumps and steps and doing stuff, but it really does stand the bike up nicely. Now, unlike the rear shark, which requires a bit more work, forks don't tend to, because it depends if you have a dial or if you have a lockout or anything like that on your fork. Now, quite often you might have something like the older CTD, the Climb Trail Descend, if you've got Fox, or if you've got Rocks, or if you've got the three-way clicker on the top. If you've got that, running it in the mid setting on trail and then adjusting your low speed compression all the way in will really make a big difference. And it will make it feel similar to what I've described with that rear shock. But unfortunately for me, I've got the, well, not unfortunately, I've got the better Fox Fork that's actually got that Grip 2 damper in it. But it does mean that it doesn't have a three position dial. Instead, I get a low speed and a high speed compression dial on the top. And you guessed it, that low speed one gets cranked right up. I don't actually change the pressure in the fork. I only do this in the shock out back. because I really find that making that adjustment and a little bit of high speed as well does calm the fork right down. Don't get me wrong, it's nothing to do with how I run this off-road. Off-road, I like it really sensitive, operating nice and fast, but in the urban environment, I like it a bit slower, less reactive. I want it to just be silently doing its thing. And as you can see, I've not used that much travel despite smashing down all of those flights of stairs. Now, usually when it comes to winter riding, I like to switch over to flat pedals as much as I can because it does make things a bit easier and a lot more fun, but, for urban riding, I'm commuting to work, I just want to get the job done. So for anywhere where I want to pedal and sprint, I'm going to default to clips. It is what I ride most of the time and it makes perfect sense. It also means I can take advantage of the big sort of waterproof reflective winter boots I've got. Absolutely fantastic for riding to work, they do do a job in off-road conditions obviously, and they've got loads of reflective stuff on there, so it just makes for a good solid combination there. Now, urban riding obviously can make your bike make some horrible noises when that chain's slapping around all over the place, especially when running a suspension firmer and less reactive and running your tires a lot firmer. It does mean you're going to notice chain slap more. Now, chain slap might be annoying, but also it does take out chunks of paint from your frame. So make sure you've got a nice rubber coated chainstay protector on there like this one. Now also will help you out if you can get something on the back of the seat stay there where the chain actually strikes when it's fully loose. You will lose a lot of paint there if you don't have that protected. And of course it is rattly, it does get annoying if you haven't got anything there. Now something I like to recommend people to use is that Scotch Mastic tape. I think it's 2228. Um, I've used it in a lot of videos on GMBN and GMBN Tech. It's not the cheapest stuff out there, but it does work fantastically well and it's really serious heavy duty rubber that sticks straight on. So you can trim it to size and stick it anywhere. Quite discreet, you don't even know it's there, but it means I'm not gonna get any chain slap. I'm not gonna get the chain taking off chunks of paint. And also there is an additional benefit to silencing your bike. Now, in the video that I just made for GMBN, I go down through the back of a lot of housing estates, down alleyways, flights of stairs, the sort of stuff that some people might frown on. It's great fun and of course, I would never ride too fast in an area where there's likely to be people. Always make sure the coast is clear. However, sometimes people don't like you being there. And if your bike is a little bit on the quiet side, you can get away with that cheeky run through there without anyone even knowing. And the final thing, while this is common sense, if you're riding in an urban environment, get yourself some lights. At the very least, get yourself some basic LED lights front and rear on the bike there so you can be seen. And you can charge them at your desk at work or at school or wherever you are. That won't be a problem charging them. The most modern ones you get now, you can plug them via USB, so you can go straight to your computer or anything like that. It's no issues. There's no excuses for not having some lights for safety. And if you insist on wearing dark clothes, make sure that some of it has some reflective panels on because you might think that you can be seen, but a lot of the time motorists won't see you, so don't take the chance. Well, there you go. That's the changes I made to my completely inappropriate bike for urban riding. Do you know what? goes pretty flipping well. I can even challenge a few roadies out there. So 
I'd love to see if you make any modifications to your bikes to uh, make them more suitable for this sort of stuff. And don't forget, if you do do this sort of riding, send some clips in to Dirt Shed Show. I'm sure Martin and the guys would love to see that stuff. Now for another urban related video, click down here if you want to see what I did to Christmas bike to set it up for jibbing. That's also a really cool video, it's going to drop any time now on GMBN, so keep an eye out for that one. And of course, if you love what we do here at GMBN Tech, give us a huge thumbs up and click that subscribe button.